Oh dear. Come on in. Take a seat. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Well, thank you for coming to me tonight. And I'm so excited to help you put together a fall-inspired menu for your dinner party. Do you know how many people you're inviting? Six. Oh, you're inviting four, but with you and your partner, that's a total of six. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Maybe I'll jot that down quickly. I, uh, spent a little bit of time just pulling out some of my favorite books and jotting down some of my favorite recipes. So we'll have a few things to look at. Now off the top of my head, I was thinking that we could offer maybe an appetizer and some kind of specialty drink and then perhaps a soup course a salad course and then the entree with a couple of sides and a dessert does that sound about right? Before we dive in, you do know that, of course, I'm not a professional. I'm just a home cook. And these are just a few of my favorite recipes and books. Okay, good, good. Most of these I've made before, but a couple of them are on my to-do list. So why don't we take a look at the books? and the recipes I've picked out ahead of time, and then we can narrow things down a little bit. And then once you've made it, some decisions, I can go ahead and maybe type up the list of recipes that you'd like to try. I know, it's my favorite time of year, too. Yeah, yeah, our leaves are turning, as you can see, but they haven't really fallen yet, so it's kind of perfect. Okay. Let me just look at my notebook here. Yes, that's right. The first book is this. Um, cookbook by Tosca Renal, and it's the Eat Clean Diet Cookbook, which I love. And she has a lot of lovely soups in here. Here's the soup chapter. Let me just shift things a tiny bit. And I think it's page. This is the roasted butternut squash soup. And it's very, very simple. You just roast up a couple of squashes and onions and a whole bulb of garlic. For a long time, it gets all soft and caramelized. And then 
you just finish it off with a bit of the lime juice, which is surprising, but delicious, and nutmeg. And this one's a little bit time intensive because of the oven time, but you could make it a day or two ahead of time and it would taste even better. I didn't even pick out any other soups for you to choose from because this one is just so fantastic. So if you're interested in serving a soup, this is the one I would suggest. Okay. Sure, I'll make a note of that and um, we'll put this on the list for sure. The one recipe in that book I thought we should look at. And then this book is the next one. And as we can see, it's well loved in our household. <laughs> it's cooking light through the seasons, and it's so nice because they've divided all the recipes by spring, summer, autumn, and winter so that everything is seasonal. So, let's see here, what did I mark down? Well, I'll skip ahead to the autumn portion, which is in the second half of the book here. I think this is still summer. Aha! quite a few interesting recipes in this book that I've flagged. Oh yes, and I wanted to start here, let me scooch this a little bit. Yes. Here's a nice picture of this spiced cider recipe. It's an apple cider and it's got really warming ingredients in it like orange, and cinnamon and clove and it also has some brandy in it so if you were interested in serving your guests an alcoholic beverage that fits with the fall theme this was going to be my first suggestion it's easy to make. Again, you could make it the day before or something like that and just reheat it. Um, and I love the way they've served it in this picture here with the cinnamon sticks inside. That's really fun. You like that? Okay, sure. I'll mark that down. Oh yes, the next recipe I was going to suggest is right here in this image. Orange and chipotle spiced pecan mix. Now this is lovely to serve in combination with um, that cocktail, the cider on the other page. And it has orange, rind and juice and like sugar and chipotle pepper and it also has dried cranberries in it so it's kind of this salty sweet spicy mix of deliciousness and then a bit of brown sugar brings it all together so yeah it's kind of just a nice little nibbling item to put out for your guests as they arrive and sort of start mingling but it's not going to fill people up too much ahead of your meal. Yeah. Okay. So you would like to go with those two then together, the apple cider and the pecan mix. Okay. Sure. Let's keep going through this book. 
we're gonna kind of jump around in the menu a little bit and just go according to what I see in the book here. Let's see what page is that? Page 250. Oh, here. Okay. a bit better. This is a fall lasagna, which I wanted to pick out in case any of the guests you're inviting are vegetarian. This is a vegetarian entree and you make your own bechamel and it's like a mushroom, sweet potato, and spinach mixture. It also has a lot of fresh sage in there, which gives it that fall feel. No, not for you. Okay, everybody eats meat. Okay, good to know. Okay, well, we can keep moving. The next one I flagged isn't too much further along in this book here. Page 257. Ah, okay. see this is a pork chop recipe but the thing I really wanted to bring to your attention is the autumn vegetable wild rice. I've made this one before and it was honestly the star of the dish. Yeah. Yeah it's delicious. It has things like, let's see, Swiss chard, Creamy mushrooms, Granny Smith apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nuttiness of the wild rice is just a really nice thing to have in a side dish. <laughs> I know my mouth is watering too. Okay, this is a definite option for a side to go along with whatever entree you choose. So I'll keep that in mind. Let's keep flipping here. Okay, the next one I picked out is also a side dish. So let's take a look. Ah, here it is. This is honey and herb roasted root vegetables. I know I love the photos in this book. It's just beautiful. Again, I've made this one before. It was such an interesting mix of vegetables. Yeah, so let's see. Fennel, butternut squash, red potato, turnip, and parsnip. And it has, um, of course, the honey, and then the main herb is thyme. Yeah. Okay, good. Another potential option to go with your entree that you choose. And I think, yes, I had one more um, recipe from this book that I wanted to show you, and it's, again, we're kind of jumping around all over the menu, but it's a dessert. Here's a nice picture of it. This is a double ginger pumpkin flan. Yeah, I haven't made this one yet, but it is very high on my list of desserts to try this fall. It's got pumpkin, vanilla, ginger, cinnamon, um, and milk in it. Do you have um, these individual ramekins that are used to make this, to make the custard or the flan? You don't? Okay, well, I have um, a set, so I could certainly loan you six or even eight if you wanted to make a couple extra. Let's see, what does this say? 
Mm. How many does it need? Oh, perfect. This is a recipe for six. Yep. Yeah, if you decide to go with this, I can certainly lend you those. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I know it just looks so creamy. Yeah, top contender for sure. Okay. Um, good. Let's put this book to the side. Here I've just put little stars beside the ones that you liked on the list. Yeah. I know this book has so many amazing recipes. It's a good one. Okay, next book. This is called White Water Cooks with Friends. It's part of a series of cookbooks from Shelley Adams. Another gorgeous cookbook, I think. I probably got it just for the pictures, <laughs> but the recipes are really great too. <laughs> yeah, I have a few of these ones. I think I have three or four of her cookbooks and they're all just lovely. Yeah, quite eclectic. Yeah, she is from Nelson, British Columbia. So. I don't know, I just find a lot of the recipes are really warming and comforting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look at the one by page 30. Oh, this is going to be for another appetizer option. Yeah, this is very comparable to the um, pecan mix from the Cooking Light book. Um, this one is a little bit more savory. Yeah, it's got a mix of nuts in it. Yeah. Yeah, and the main seasonings in this one are rosemary and then of course you have the sugar and salt yeah I've made this one it's delicious as well mm -hmm. okay yeah maybe this is a better option to pair with that cider because I find apple cider can be quite sweet so maybe having a more savory mixed nut option Yep, I agree. That might be even better. Okay. I'll just make a star on my notebook. Okay. Let's keep moving. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Oh yeah, here's a suggestion for a salad course. Warm pear, stilton, and walnut salad with orange marmalade dressing. Yeah, that combination of stilton and pear is quite something. Yeah, it's quite a simple salad. Um, it could be thrown together quite quickly. Yeah, and you could make the dressing ahead of time. I'm just looking. There's nothing fancy in it, it's just some vinegar, marmalade. Yeah, things are all sort of cupboard and fridge staples, so let's take a better look at the picture. Yeah. Yeah, 
that's nice to just serve it with some nice mixed baby greens. It's always nice to serve something green. Let me look at my list. I think I had one other salad picked out for you. Yeah, I kind of had suggested two salads to choose from, so this is the first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Let's keep trucking along. I have another entree option. going to flip through. Um, a couple more pages here. I love this recipe. This is Margie's pork tenderloin saltimbocca roasted on a bed of braised apples. And that combination of pork and apple is just so classic in the fall. Yep, it's got fresh sage leaves and prosciutto, and that's wrapped around the tenderloin. Here, I'll give you a better look at the picture. Yep, it's a one-pot meal. It's served in the skillet, Every, or everything rather is cooked in the skillet. Mm-hmm. It looks fancy, but it's a very simple meal. Now, this recipe is um, designed to serve four from one pork tenderloin, but I have made this before where I just simply double um, the pork. I keep, well, I think I've added a little bit of extra apples as well, but mm -hmm, you could just throw in it maybe an extra apple or two, but I have doubled the pork and it's turned out just fine. So you could easily make enough of this for six people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to admit this is sort of my favorite for your entree. Um, oh, you like it too? Okay, that's good. Well, let's keep it in mind. I haven't made this one for a little while. Maybe I'll have to it on next week's menu in our household. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got another um, option for you for an entree. This one doesn't have a picture, but it's a beef bourguignon. And it's Jane's apparently. <laughs> I feel like you can't go wrong with a classic beef stew like this, but in a way, it's it's maybe more of a winter menu item. You agree? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it would throw it in there as an option, but yeah, it kind of does feel more like something you want with a crusty bread in the middle of winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a couple more in this book to look at, and they're recipes in the dessert category. Let's see, we have pear and fresh ginger cake. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. If you do the pear and Stilton salad, it might be too much pear in the overall menu if we chose this. Okay, yeah. Let's keep going then. Um, I had one more picked out. Where is it? Oops, went too far. Ah, yes. Pecan pie fill is a recipe on the other side of this page for a homemade pie crust, but if you cheated and got a store-bought pie crust, I wouldn't do. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, there's an image of the pine, sort of the background of this photo here, the pecan. I know, pecan pie is delicious. Okay, yep, yeah, let's keep it in mind then. Okay, so that was the Whitewater Cooks with Friends book. And there's one book left, except it's a magazine. <laughs> yeah, this is um, a fall edition of this magazine. There's only a few that I picked out in here, so we're almost done. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they've got this whole section on autumn grilling, if the weather's right. So, I thought I would select this for you as an option. I've made this and it's delicious. It's an orzo salad with grilled broccolini and sausage. And I find that it's really a substantial salad, so you could consider it as an entree. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. You kind of want to be able to be in the home with your guests and not running outside to the grill and back. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. No problem. Yes, it's a whole section of beets, and I did want to show you this beet salad. It is served, yeah, this is the second salad option I had picked out for you. Um, it has oregano, pecans, and goat cheese. And as you can see, it's sort of a variety of colored beets. So this is golden and red, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough because beets are such um, a false staple, but this isn't a salad that has any greenery in it, so it just depends kind of what you're going for. You know, I agree, let's lock in that pear and Stilton salad. Save this for another time. And I think, yep, there's only one recipe left. Let's take a look. Is another entree option. A little bit more Italian inspired. Yes, here it is. Yeah, parsnip risotto with pancetta and sage. Oh, you've never made risotto? You know, it's not terribly challenging from a technical perspective. It's just a little bit time consuming. It requires lots of stirring. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the chance to try this one yet, but it looks delicious. And again, it's kind of that fall pork and combined with the sage. I think we've kind of narrowed it down a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah, I think.
think, wait, let me just quickly jot this down to make sure that I've got it right. So we're going to do the cider. We're going to do, now instead of the orange pecan, we decided on the tapas nuts, the more savory. Yeah. Yeah. The butternut squash. Soup. And for the salad, we decided on the pear stilton. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I think that's the right choice, the pork tenderloin as the main entree with the apples. Yeah, I would suggest um, a side with that. So we did look at that autumn wild rice or the honey herb roasted root vegetables. Mm, yeah, I think that would go really nicely, the wild rice. Yep, okay. And then for dessert, you had flagged the ginger pumpkin flans. We decided against the pear ginger cake or there was the pecan pie. Classic choice, yeah, the pecan pie. And you could serve that with an ice cream or some hand whipped cream on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Oh, this was absolutely my pleasure. I have so much fun planning out menus and things like that. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll maybe type this up and snap some photos of the recipe pages and send that through to you. Yeah. Okay, let me know how it goes. so much for coming and I'll see you soon.